So, hi everybody. Uh, we're going to talk this week uh, a bit about hemispheric synchronization and homolateral and it, uh, its effect on your body, mind, spirit integration. And plus anything else you guys want to throw toss out as we go along. But to, we'll start off with the uh, with the idea of the uh, homolateral. And that is, uh, homolateral means same side. So our body mind is designed so that the right side of the brain uh, animates the left side of the body, controls the left side of the body, the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body. And so there's this crisscrossing that occurs that uh, is energetically it's happening as well, that there are these crossovers that are occurring throughout the whole system. And whenever we get stressed out or there's an injury or some sort of trauma or a um, exhaustion or just sitting stuck doing the same exercise or the same activity for too long, you can get what's called homolateral, which, which means that the crossover is not happening nearly as well. You're, you're losing some of your ability to, to shift back and forth between the two sides of the brain. And pretty much anything that we will say about the brain here in the year 2020 will be laughably obsolete, probably another 20 years, but uh, it doesn't stop us from working with what we got. And uh, the key to, to, to this stuff is that does it work or does it produce a desirable effect? It's one way of telling the story. Whenever I talk about it in terms of brain, in terms of uh, you know, how your, uh, your neural responses are. Uh, and if it helps right now to to get the job done, then we, we, we use it. Like I say, it, it, that could change. But for right now, we, there's an assumption that the left side of the brain controls the right side of the body. And it is also tends to direct activities, which tend to be more of your day-to-day -day business. It controls your speech centers, your, your ability to compute mathematically, uh, to, um, uh, to remember things in a linear fashion. So there's a, uh, that is generally assigned to the left side of the brain. Although, as I said, it, that could, uh, it's a little fuzzy and it's, it's a little simplistic, but it's, it, it works for, for what we have now. The right side of the brain tends to be mute. That is, it is not language oriented and it deals with images, concepts, and the more of a big picture kind of thing. So sometimes some people call it the, the left side as the, um, the sign mode. That is, it is, it, it is connected with language. And the right side of the brain, the design mode, the design mode. So, so we have the, uh, we have those two. So the, uh, you want both, you need both. But uh, whenever you, there's brain injuries say, uh, or uh, even like a, a, your a injury to your skull where, the, where it's impinging on some part that slows things down, it can create, uh, uh, create problems there where you, one side of the brain will shut down. And, um, uh, so we want to get it. So we want to rehabilitate that and get everybody working at, uh, at a, in a highly cooperative way, highly integrated way. So it, um, the, um, one of the things that happens with whenever you get homolateral, which is where one side of the brain is tends to get kind of, uh, shut down. It's that you, uh, when you, when you exercise, this is where this question came up the other night, it was the, when you exercise, you actually feel worse. You don't get the benefit of exercise. And 
So it tends to make you less and less eager to do that. Your body tends to get a little confused. It tends to get, uh, uh, you get clumsy. You get, uh, and if it continues for a long time, you get depressed. So uh, uh, some people equate, or at least say that homolateral contributes to depression. I have in working with clients, I have given this exercise to people who were in a, in a funk, were in a, in a state of a prolonged depression, and it actually did a lot of good. So uh, one of those things where you want to try it out and see. And see. I know um, in terms of physical activity, when I'm playing tennis and if nothing's going right, I'm, I'm like, my hand-eye coordination is off, I'm clumsy, things, you know, my serve is just not working. Uh, if I'm smart, I'll say, oh, I think I'm homolateral right now, and I'll quickly do this exercise, and, and it'll get me back on track. So uh, let's, uh, let's play with that a little bit. Um, why don't you stand up? Very simple exercise. So the, what you want to do first is to and train with the homolateral response. And that is the, you're going to raise your right knee and touch it with your right hand, your left knee, your left hand. And just, we're going to do this for a little bit. And this is a homolateral thing. That is, it's the same side. And if you are homolateral, this helps because this is what your body's already doing. So you're just sort of kind of saying, hey, buddy, I know what you're doing. We're going to do this for a little while, OK? And you kind of get on the same wavelength there. Now you, you change it by, by going, boom, you right hand to left knee and left hand to right knee. So we go like this, go back like that. And you want to feel your hand. You want to feel your knee. You want to feel the offhand too as it reaches out. You are connecting up the two sides of your body here. You're getting that crossover. This is really important for brain development in children, be getting that crossover going. That's why they children learn to crawl before they before they walk. Good. And then we go back and we do it homolateral again. Good. And then we do the crossover again. Good. And then just stand there and feel into it. And the more you can feel your body, the more work it's doing for you, the more, uh, uh, more effect you're going to get from that particular exercise or any exercise that we're doing. OK, so uh, grab a seat. It's a simple exercise, and it's at, uh, but it's uh, very effective. Any questions on that one? Ah. You're uh, on mute. There you go. Working on it. Um, just mostly a curiosity question, but does that make any difference if you're left-handed or right-handed? No. Does that have any effect? No. 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 It's uh, it, and, and, and at least in terms of the exercise, no. It may it may affect which part of your uh, which is the dominant side of your brain. It will affect that, but it uh, won't affect the uh, the homolateral condition. Rick. 
Do you only use it if you're depressed or whatever, or can you use it for any at any time for any reason? It's it's a good it's a good thing just to keep on top of your game. So uh, anything that that helps with the getting that that uh, hemispheric synchronization is is helpful. So I'm going to talk about that in a little bit, but also there's a, another exercise you can do, which you can do standing or sitting, which you reach out with your thumb down, palm out, and then bring your hand over like that, interlace your fingers, and then bring them up like this. And then breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. Good, and reach out and then put your right hand, thumb down, left hand comes over that and do it that way. Yeah, and undo it and there you go. And both these exercises, both the homolateral crossover and this one here, I learned from uh, Donna Eden. And um, I did some, some seminars with her and uh, so some really good stuff coming through, through her group. But the, uh, uh, if you're at all fuzzy, you know, if you're, let's say you're, you're sitting down to read or to write or something and you're just, you're, your brain's just not clicking, so it's not, not, you're not, not there with it. You can do either of those two exercises and that will help immensely to clear things up. Okay. And um, so, uh, yeah, so yes, Nora. You're on mute. Okay, there you go. Um, so one of the things that we do in Yo is similar is to harmonize or synchronize the two sides of the brain is alternate nostril breathing. Yep. And that has a similar kind of effect, you know, where you close off one nostril, exhale, yeah. and through, close, exhale. Very yes, simple. that's true. It, it had yeah. the same, I was just doing some of that and it had the same kind of effect. It was interesting. <laughs> yes, yes, you're right. It has the same kind of effect. Um, so, yeah, Beatrice. I just have a thought, which is when we were doing the same, the, 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 mon, the same sided marching, yes. it reminded me of kind of military marching. And I wondered if, Inversely, the military wants their soldiers to like not be, uh, you know, not be creative. In other words, if you're a, a soldier, has to a, a sinister thought, but uh, probably somewhat accurate. Um, another thing, one of the things uh, that impressed me about this, uh, the the homolateral exercise, was when uh, Donna was uh, was presenting it in a uh, in a seminar. She had uh, she had a big strong guy, and uh, she had had him do go up and and do jumping jacks, you know, like da, 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 da. And, then, and then she did, she did a test on him and, and as strong as he was, the arm just came down immediately. And it's because jumping jacks put you in a homolateral state. So because you're, it's the same thing about you don't get the cross over there. So it takes you out of, out of present time. So she said, uh, you know, don't bet on the team that does jumping jacks as a, uh, you know, <laughs> as a warm up, because um, it it does put you on, it takes you out of out of that, uh, you know, out, out of present time basically. So um, I remember doing lots of jumping jacks when I was in uh, in high school and in, in in sports and uh, yeah, it, it 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 not quite uh, didn't quite help as much as I I, I thought it did at the time. Um, so going on from there, uh, I want to correlate this with the idea of hemispheric synchronization. And that is that we have these two sides of the brain which do not communicate very well with each other in their, in their default setting. They speak to each other through a, a, a trunk of nerves called the corpus callosum. And it, uh, and if you're using that, if you're dependent on that as your primary communication, 
it slows everything way down. So there's something called hemispheric synchronization where you get the whole brain tapping its toe to the same beat. You get it pulsing together. And when that happens, then you're no longer restricted to the corpus callosum, but there's communication is happening over the surface of the brain. It becomes more of a field phenomenon rather than a linear Christmas tree lights kind of affair where things are, are moving along kind of very slowly. And it's something that I've been playing with for over 30 years now. I started off by doing it with um, uh, binaural beats, that is using sound, you put one uh, tone in one ear and a slightly different tone in the other ear. Let's say the, the, uh, the uh, one ear you put 400 cycles per second, the other one you put 410. And the difference between the two, which is 10 cycles per second, is what your brain will tap its toe to. That is your brain will go into a 10 cycle per second beat. And when that happens, the whole brain then entrains to a 10 cycle per second, which puts you smack dab in the alpha band. So you go into an alpha wave brain wave state. So it, uh, uh, so there's a whole industry around hemispheric synchronization via binaural beats. And I mean, years ago, they started developing apps for your cell phones so that I, I have, you know, several of those and they're quite ingenious. So they put that to music and, and they can take you to lots of different places. I use it uh, a lot for either, if I want to take a, um, a quick power nap, you know, I would say, oh, I'm going to plug out, I'm going to shut down for 20 minutes. I plug the, plug the, uh, the earbuds in and get the hem brain synchronized in a delta band, which is between uh, zero and three cycles per second. And you're, you're off to the races. And then you get a little, then it'll shoot back up to beta, which is up in the twenties and they're like above 14. Then you're, uh, and you're back and you're wide awake and you're refreshed and you're ready to go for hours and hours and hours. So that's, uh, that's that. But I also use it for, for extremely um, high frequency stuff, gamma stuff, which then is, uh, creates a heightened state of, of brain activity in a highly coherent way. So you're getting this whole brain coherence going on, which is really cool. And once you've done enough of it, you start to be able to go there yourself whenever you want. And that's kind of cool too. And you also recognize whenever you're in a state of hemispheric synchronization. So uh, any questions on that? That's, that's sort of a, a, a prelude to what I'm talking about there. Everybody got all that? Uh, that, uh, that cool? Okay, so that's, uh, it's something I've talked about before, but it's uh, well worth checking out if you haven't done so already. Then, uh, so then, Recently, more recently, in the last couple of years, I started thinking about taking that and using the Taiji Qi Gong and the skills that we learned there to actually create the hemispheric synchronization in a very physical way. And so to do that, um, you can do this standing or sitting, but... Uh, uh, let's say sitting for now. I'm going to talk you through as if you are sitting. And um, the uh, if you put your hands on your knees and uh, feel your knees and you feel your your left knee with your left hand. And what this is doing is it's, it's getting your, your right brain, the right hemisphere of your brain, it's, it's uh, creating more uh, energy there. And then we shift and we feel your, your right knee with your right hand. Now this activates your left side of your brain. And when, you, when I say you feel it, you might even give your knee a squeeze or something just to be able to 
to get that get that feeling there. Now go back to your left knee, and this time I want you to feel your left hand with your left knee. So instead of feeling your hand with your knee, I want you to separate out and use your knee to feel your hand. And you may feel some quality about it, your, the heat of your hand perhaps, or the weight of it or something. But I want you to actually feel it with your body. Now go back to your right knee and feel your right hand with your right knee. So you're getting um, so you're actually feeling the, the 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 hand, the weight of it, the heat of it, maybe the pressure of it. And then go back and feel your left knee with your left hand. Feel your right knee with your right hand. Feel your left knee, feel your left hand with your left knee. So notice we're, we're moving to different parts of the brain to do this. Feel your right hand with your right knee. Now good. Mix that up a little bit and grab your left wrist with your right hand. And feel your left wrist using your right hand. So you're using your, your, your mind to filter out the sensations of your left wrist and emphasize the sensations in your right hand. Now feel your right hand with your left wrist. You can move your wrist around a little bit or squeeze it or something just to get that, create that distinction if you need some help there, but you want to do that. So now we're crossing over. Now shift and feel your left wrist, your right wrist with your left hand. And And notice the effect that this is having on your state of your state of mind. Now feel your left hand with your right wrist. Good. And then separate the hands, bring them back to your knees, and just relax and just notice what's happened with your brain. Notice how. Uh, the effect that, that, it's, that has uh, been created by doing that. So you've created some hemispheric synchronization, but you're also doing, so it's not just lateral, which is the left, left brain, right brain, but also you're doing it, there's a vertical integration that is the sensory motor, the, the body part, the feelings, are being integrated with your conscious mind as well. So there's a left-right synchronization, but there's also a vertical synchronization as well. And when you do that, you start to awaken untapped potential in your mind. You start to create new neural networks. You to actually create new neural connections in your brain which then allows you to access more energy and information consciously. And this has a profound effect on your Taiji, your Qigong, your meditation, etc. Any questions so far? Does that make all, that makes sense, everybody? You feel it? You feel a change of state when that happened? Beatrice. Yeah, I just felt incredibly clear and settled afterwards. It was, it was very it was remarkable. Good, good. And it doesn't take long to get there. Lovely. So, so what we're you know, learning to how to use your brain like you would use a computer. You know, it, it's, not, it's not you, it's you know, part of you, 
but it's not, but you are learning to utilize it, make it, uh, make it do tricks for you. And uh, yeah, Lynn. I kind of went somewhere else. I mean, I like was almost not here and half a, a sleep ish, trance ish, something ish. Yeah. Was that what I was aiming for? No. Okay. <laughs> 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 Darn, that, missed again. <laughs> but that is a that is a response to going to that place because it's you know there's a whole brain coherence and it creates a very <laughs> delightful state you know and where but um uh it's associated with other activities which you may have done uh which <laughs> will take you to the other, you know, <laughs> transing out state, because right. that's that, that's a fun thing to do, right? Also, yeah. Yeah. but uh, uh, this, well, it's not what we're going for, okay. even though it is fun. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'll try. So wait. So 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 that does uh, raises a question though for me. You know, th you ask everybody to um, notice the change in s mental state. Right. So how do you isolate the difference between what you're feeling that's part of this specific exercise versus just the notion of sitting, calming, focus, focusing your brain on anything, actually, just something to take it into a focused place? How do you separate the difference between because the impact the subjective experience for me is fairly similar. Yes, yes. And, uh, and it's not to say that you haven't been doing that all along. I, I, I don't know. I'm just saying that what I'm trying to do here is, is make a, a map that can take anybody to this place if they want to go there. And uh, some people stumble on it. And, uh, uh, but this, this is a way of dependably getting there you know, just by doing these simple things. And I got there by doing decades of hemispheric synchronization and recognizing that as something different from just being calm and centered. Right. Okay, so for me, it's, you know, it, the research came from, from lots and lots of, of experience doing it and saying, oh, this is something special. And it's something which will also show up on, you know, a uh, uh, a brain scan. You know, it'll show up. You know, it's something that'll show up on a on, on a, um, uh, you know, a PET scan or something like that. You'll see that that there is uh, activity occurring that is unusual when you're in a state of hemispheric synchronization. Uh, I think in all these insubstantial states they can look very similar to each other from the outside or even experientially but you can also by getting in there with a fine enough scalpel you can say okay this over here this is in this category and this over here is in that category and depending on what you want to accomplish with it what i can accomplish with the hemispheric synchronization is that more of me is involved in my brain activity so that I am integrating body, mind, spirit at a level that I recognize as really, really cool and uh, has potential for opening me up to insights that I could not get otherwise. So it's sort of like doing some mushrooms or something like that. You get to get, uh, you know, it opens you up into another world and you like say, oh, I wouldn't have gotten here had I not done those substances. And the similar kind of thing here. The nice thing about this, it doesn't cost you anything, and it's uh, it's really dependable. Um, you know, it's yeah, you know, it's it's not no, it's not, it's not as glamorous, but it's uh, but it, it's very effective, and uh, it's also incredibly useful uh, in terms of your kung fu. Because in a when we're doing, let's say, a tai chi form or something like that, you want to. Uh, you want to be in a, in a super conscious state, a state of body, mind, spirit integration, or you just, you're, you're getting, 
you know, if you're just getting pennies on the dollar for, for the Taiji experience otherwise, if you are in a super conscious state, you can then keep track of lots and lots of things simultaneously because you've moved beyond the very narrow uh, framework of your conscious mind, the, your cognitive mind, which thinks very plottingly in terms, in terms of uh, symbolic logic and also in terms of uh, uh, representational thought. And you're moving into something where you're integrating that left and right brain. So it's more than just a cool kind of state, more, hey, this is fun. You're, whenever you're able to access this quiet part of your brain, the, the left side of the brain that doesn't like to talk very much, and you're able to plug in and say, okay, brother, what are you talking about? You know, what's, what's going on here with you? And then if you're integrated, then the words come very quickly to explain what it is is happening in this nonverbal area of, of your brain. That's my way of explaining it. Okay, that makes sense? Good, Richard, you had something. Um, I, I just had, uh, um, I just wanted to mention that when we first started doing um, the feel your hand with your knee, yes. for instance, uh, I, th that, was a, that was a little foreign for me in the beginning until I realized that, um, you know, you can, you can feel a mosquito land on your leg. Right. So then I started thinking to myself, well, my knee really can feel, maybe not as well as my hand in the term in sensory mode, but my knee really can't, does have a keen sense of feeling. Sure. It also made me think, like from my childhood, the, the uh, if you have siblings, you know, there's the constant, "Mom, Johnny's touching me," when he's <laughs> not hardly touching you at all, but you can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's important to be able to have that combined sense, to be able to sense your knee feeling your hand as well as you can sense your hand feeling your knee. Yeah. So just, just a, you know. That, that, that's really, that's really good thing to point out there, Richard. I appreciate that. Cause that's, uh, uh, you know, a while back I was talking about how that by feeling, by awakening the afferent neural network that, and, and doing that consciously, we are bringing, the pre-consciousness into consciousness. And that is what activates this whole brain coherence. So any excuse we can get to, to feel Johnny touching you uh, is, uh, is, is, is cool. You know, you want, you want to feel that. So, you know, can you feel if you're wearing pants, can you feel your pants on your legs? You know, it, yeah, you know, so your legs can feel so. You know, the, and you're right, the, we tend to get, uh, they're shouted down by the incredible uh, power of our hands to feel because that's where we have more neural connections there and it's more familiar and it's something that we, we do a lot of. So it's, it, it's easy to go there first, but to be able to consciously override that then awakens sleeping parts of your brain. And the more you do that, the more awake you become. You start to access parts of your, your, your brain that you, you never knew were, were even there. Yeah, Richard. And learning to feel your hand with your knee enables you to feel your elbow against nothing. Yes, yes, good point, good point. Because <laughs> we do want to do that. We want to feel your elbow against nothing. So, <laughs> good. Anybody else? Any other uh, thoughts? This is great. Great, great. Uh, Beatrice. I'm curious if the various crossing things we've done are, are if EMDR therapy is based on that. Yes. Yes, Thank yes. There, there is a, uh, no, there, there's a, a definite correlation there. And what they're doing there is using that, that shifting to break up fixed patterns of, of response. 
So you're you're rewiring your brain that way too. You know, so that's 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 also good. And, and, uh, and interestingly, people use EMDR for trauma therapy, and they're also looking at some of the substances you were talking about earlier for trauma therapy. So there's this interesting, there's a parallel there that yeah. you can you can access those states without without the medication. We are we are just at the, at the the very beginning of of learning how to to do, you know what's possible with the brain, and you know there's a lot of spiritual talk that kind of wants to minimize the brain and as, as something sort of extraneous or irrelevant, but it's it's part of your body, and there's a a, a lot of it, it whatever it is. It does a lot of work for us, and you, you want to keep it in good shape, and and be able to utilize it as much as possible. Whether it's you know the be all and end all, I don't know, but the it certainly it, it's it's a keen thing to have around, and uh, and I don't know anybody who's conscious without one. So you know it's uh, uh, it's, it's it's good to have, <laughs> and good to keep it in shape. Okay, good. Anybody else? Any other thoughts? Yeah, Rick. Dennis, yeah. I find it very difficult. I mean, once once my hand, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> once my hand touches my knee, it just melds into one. I yes. find it very hard to separate the two. That's a great point, Dennis. Thank you. So, anybody else experienced that? Your your hand touches your knee, and all just one thing, right? It's all just kind of. Yeah. Is there is there a trick to it? What what am I missing? Uh, well, uh, it's. It requires work to to separate out. So um, so if you you know if you you know can you know just take your hand and feel into that, and now you're you know, you bring it closer and closer to your knee, and you can feel almost when it's not touching yet, but it's it's really close. You can start to feel the heat of the hand or feel something going on there, and then. You actually, oh, okay. There's so there's it's slowing it way down and separating out, and this gets in it gets into one of the real fundamental concepts of uh, of Tai Chi Twin and 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 internal arts in general. And that is, it is in the separating that we create energy. So you know, uh, great. Um, uh, my first experience with that was a guy. Uh, uh, Master uh, Abraham Liu, who uh, who uh, said at a seminar, "Yin is yang, yang is yin. First, separate the two. <laughs> and like I'm like, bah, 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 you know, <laughs> <laughs> what's he talking about, you know? And this was early in my in my uh, my explorations. I I really didn't have a clue. Yin is yang, yang is yin." First, separate the two, yeah. and and so you know the the idea is that at, at, at its core there is no separation. There's just the there's just the tai chi, which is that undifferentiated wholeness. But whenever you want to look at the tai chi, you say, oh, there's this. There are. It's actually kind of. These inner this interplay of oppositions. Right, right, yeah. So so we say okay, so we can look at it as a wholeness, or we can look at it as a as interplay of polarities. So that's that's cool. So we so now it's a, it, but anytime you want to create energy, you need to separate the two. So people want to go right to the wholeness and say, oh okay, done. You know, I'm in the state of wholeness. Great. You know, so job's done. Like, no, no, you're just getting you're just getting started there. Now separate the two and make something. Make yourself a pot, you know, whatever. You know, you know do some do, do a somersault. Do something with it. But yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, the game is not in in achieving this state of wholeness and, and staying there. The game is in in like, okay, go to wholeness. Now we go to separation. Now go back to wholeness. Now go back to separation and back and forth and have fun with that. And that's uh, when we do that, then we're doing Tai Chi Chuan. Because that's okay. the, it's a martial art based on the interplay of polarities. The boundary so, is insubstantial. Yes. So what you want to do, 
So to, to practice that, you're training your nervous system. And if you've gotten, you know, this far in your life without having that particular skill, just think what's going to happen when you do have that particular skill. Yeah. When you do are able to make that differentiation, you are going to be creating new neural connections in your brain. You are going to get smarter every day that you you are doing that. Because you are awakening parts of your brain that are that are have been asleep for decades. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? This is a great question today. Thank you. I'm loving this. I don't Without necessarily I don't have a question, but um, I know what worked for me to help keep that separation. Um, it was what you suggested, you know, like maybe squeeze your knee with your hand so that puts the focus on your hand. And right. if it started to fade, if I, you know, if they started to meld, I just squeezed a little again. And then when I was feeling my hand with my knee, I would just kind of tighten the muscle a little bit in my leg and that would bring it to focus and the right. hand would, would recede. So that was very helpful, what you put yeah. out there to help differentiate them. Excellent. And now just bring your hand on your wrist, you know, your right hand on your left wrist right now. And without doing any of that, and knowing that you want to differentiate between the two, we want to separate, can you compartmentalize your brain? Because there are different parts of the brain that are doing it. And can you recognize that line that separates the two? Can you feel that? As it is easy to just dissolve into, into a, a oneness, but every, whenever you do the separation, you actually, you animate. You, you start to create this cool effect. You create energy. Cool, everybody got that? Everybody cool with that? Good, good, good. Okay, beautiful. Scott. Um, that a, um, just, uh, the last time we did this, or the first time we did this, um, so having, you know, my hand, my right hand on my right knee, my left hand on my left knee, I decided, you know, of course, to go for the advanced technique and tried feeling my left hand with my right knee and my right hand with my left knee. And I tell you, my brain actually, like, started shaking. It was really <laughs> kind of the advanced cool. class. Good, good, yeah. good, good. So, <laughs> yeah, without moving, just just sitting there with yeah, it's yeah, it, no, no, you're right. That 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 that's beautiful. <laughs> Good, and I highly recommend it. You know, we did it with our wrists, but you can also do it with your knees. And yeah, you know, if we do it standing up now, So let's get the three pillars in, right? We want to feel the balls of the feet. Reach with the knee one. Tuck in the chin, open up the jade pillow gate. Boom, boom, you want to release the qua. You want to sung qua. Reach out with your elbows, point to your index fingers. So we can easily go into a state of wholeness like this. In a state of coherence. But let's now use attention and say, okay, feel the ball of your left foot. And in doing that, you're making the left foot substantial just by bringing your attention there. Now feel the ball of your right foot. Now back to the left foot. Notice you're already starting to change your state of being just by doing that. And then back to the right foot. Just by directing your attention like that and feeling, you're connecting up to parts of your body, which maybe you don't notice as much. Now feel your left elbow. Now 
Feel your right elbow. Now feel your left elbow and your right elbow at the same time, but differently. Not as one event, but two unique events. <laughs> feel, the, feel the hair on your head. Feel the shirt on your back. Now feel your pulse. Feel your heartbeat. Feel your perineum. Feel the ring finger on your left hand. Feel the ring finger on your right hand. Feel the space between the thumb and forefinger on your left hand. And if you're not feeling that, then without moving your fingers, press your index finger and your thumb together without moving them. Just feel that those poles in opposition and then feel the space between. Now do the same with your right hand. Now do both those together. Now dissolve all those and allow them to exist as a potentiality that you can recreate at any moment. But just allow yourself to settle into the space between thoughts. Keep that feeling, keep that energy, and grab a seat. How'd that feel? Great. Any 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 thoughts? Any. Sharon. Uh, what a 
wonderful trip I just went on. I got so much energy um, and it was going in different directions. Um, and it, and the thought came to me is I have everything I need within myself to heal myself at all times. If I can do this. <laughs> Fabulous. That's great. That's great. And so true. That's so true. Good. Anybody else? My, uh, my basically every part of my body, especially my eyebrows, were going party at Myers Place. <laughs> <laughs> it was really incredible. It was just awesome. <laughs> he said, "Go down into the oneness." But inside me, all everybody was running around going. Ah. <laughs> Great, Scott. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, wow. Well. Yeah, that's, yeah, I don't really have words for that, um, but um, really cool because really cool that you gave us all those different things to play with because that's a lot of, a lot of all the different examples and things that you brought up and, you know, feeling the space and all that stuff, which I hadn't played with yet. Wow. So thanks for yeah, that. But whenever you're feeling the space between the thumb and forefinger, did, that's pretty cool, right? It's a, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Beatrice. Yeah, that was. I felt like it. I felt like it was amping up and up and up. And then when you did the space with the forefinger, I almost fell over. Like it was like I'm like <laughs> I'm gonna fall down. It was so. It was like almost too much energy for my wiring. It was really intense. Was, and and then I was like, oh no, you can you can ride the wave. As I did, but yeah. Well. <laughs> <Great>. <laughs> it's like it's over the edge or something. Sandy, that was amazing. Um, yeah, I. I I really felt it first when you said, um, put your, put your mind into the balls of your feet and it made that foot substantial. And then by the time we got to the, my face was tingling. And then, uh, yeah, by the end of it, I was just buzzing all around <laughs> pretty much. It's great. <laughs> terrific. Terrific. Good. Good. What's that? Lynn. Lynn. Yeah. So yeah, me too. Whoa. Uh, and I, <laughs> I was playing with the, each one, you know, left foot, right foot, right, and then adding each one and like Beatrice said, ramping up, but I was also then playing with letting them go and having them be sort of sitting there waiting available to be tapped into or not tapped into. And which was super great because it was like such a huge extra level of reserve energy that I could do at any time mm -hmm. I wanted. And I guess I just kind of like wasn't sure whether there's a, yeah, I'm always looking for a right and a wrong, which I know is well not right. Um, but um, whether, you know, whether that makes sense to do it like that, I don't know. I just, it was just like. No, that's perfect. That's perfect because what it is is you're you're leaving them there as recreatable potentials of energy. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, so they're, they're there as recreatable potentials, so you don't have to hang on to them. They're right. they're yours, you know. <laughs> all those all those little pieces of those little nuggets of chi are there, just just sitting there waiting for you to come by and say, "Oh, you," and it's a, "Oh, me." Yeah, put me in, coach. And and right. bam, they're there, you know. Like a party at Rick's house, you know, like party, we, everybody would come to the party, and they were all just hanging out at the party, and uh, yeah, chi yeah. capacitors, chi capacitors, sure. chi capacitors. That's right. Yeah, lovely, yeah. beautiful, yeah. beautiful. Okay, we can start wrapping up. Okay, great. Well, uh, thank you all so much. It's yeah, Rick. Oh, yes, Dennis. Yeah, I think, you know, you, you gave me a key there, you know, I said I couldn't feel the difference between my hand and the knee. And you said, feel for the space. And that was just, oh, yeah. And then once I, I was feeling for the space, it just opened everything up. And it's right. not just, it's just not just the space between the thoughts, the space between everything. Beautiful. Beautiful. You know, you have the space, the space between the thumb <laughs> and the finger, the, the space between the ball, the ball of feet and the floor and the... 
the the, 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 the space the space in in your finger. Yeah, the I mean, space in your finger. Yeah, the space <laughs> between the muscle space. Fingers. Yeah, the space between everything. That's yeah. right. So so feel into the. So then we're playing with the insubstantial. We're actually feeling into the insubstantial. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool, hey, Richard. I, I was just going to say, uh, you know, listening to what Dennis was saying, I'm just going to remind us all that mostly what there is is space. Right. It's nice to be able to go there. There's a lot of room. Yeah, to be able to actually feel it is, yeah, it it's a different mindset because our nervous systems are designed to feel the resistance of stuff. And, and that's how we learn, feel the resistance of stuff. And, but when we move into the internal arts, we're feeling into the non-stuff. And that's where, the, that's where the juju is. The juju is hiding in the, in the non-stuff. So yes. we, uh, to be able to go in there and to have the tools to recognize that, we have this little you know, miner's lantern now that we can go in there and say, oh, we're looking for non-stuff here. And we can actually actually recognize it with that little little glint that it gives whenever you uh, whenever you you come near it. It's like, oh yeah, this is cool. And uh, then you play with it. Great. You earlier you were talking about some people want to you know take the mind out of it, but my attitude is they're all part of the team. I'm not putting anybody off the team. <laughs> well put. Yeah. Yes. Well put. On that note, okay, go team. <laughs> I guess. Love you all. Love you too. Love you too.